From here on, nothing goes down unless I'm involved. No blackjack, no dope deals, no nothing. A nickel bag gets sold in the park. I want in. Yes, yes, yes. Peace, family. We are back again with another verified DB teach tape. My it's your gracious host, Mr. VDB. And I'm back once again to kick a little game and flavor for my young DBs out there and help you elevate and take your game to the next level and let me first say before we get into the film study today on our good guy noah igabogany uh you thank the family i really appreciate the comments the love and support you guys have been showing me in the comment section it really means a lot to me it lets me know that the hard work i'm putting in is not going to waste and it lets me know that i'm actually making an impact on the football game a game that we all love so i really appreciate that Again, help your boy get this video to 100 likes if you want to see a part five. My young safeties out there, safeties, you still should pay attention to the DB, the cornerback videos as well because you're going to be running a lot of man-to-man. -man. You're going to be guarding a lot of these slot receivers. But I am working on a safeties teach tape. I am working on a safeties teach tape, so be patient. I promise you it's coming. It's a little bit more difficult than the corner teach tape, but it's coming. So trust me on that, guys. But with that being said, let's get into our man Noah Igabagany, a corner that I like a lot, and he's a corner that we can learn a lot from. And the reason why is because he's a very young DB. I think he's only been playing cornerback for roughly around two years now. So let's look at some of his because he struggles with uh he struggles with his footwork a lot when he gets beat. He doesn't get beat that much. He's a very good corner. Like I said, I'm not in the business of dogging cornerbacks. I respect anybody who step there, uh, step out there on the field. You know what I'm saying? But that's a lot of good film and a lot of good things I want you guys to learn from him. Because this is a first-round corner. This is a guy who was taken in the first round by the Miami Dolphins. And he's still very raw. So let's look at some of his footwork. Now, starting off rip, guys, I always tell you guys, understand position of power. When you step into the DP position, when you're in man-to-man -man coverage, you always want to know where your help is. Noah Gabagany, Auburn plays their corners inside technique, so he's lined up inside technique. Now, let's go ahead and, and play the footage. Now, first things first, guys. Again, I tell you guys this. Playing press man, remember this, guys. You press with your feet. You don't press with your hands. Hands come secondary. Your feet are the priority because you can have you can put hands on God, but your feet are out of position and he can wipe off those hands or he can throw you off balance. He can make you fall. He can do things. He can use your hands as leverage for him. That's why your feet have to be in position. It's harder for a receiver to knock down your hands and throw you off if your feet are square. So the first thing, you know, I always tell DBs is stay square at the line. Be patient. Be patient. No way. As soon as the ball snap. He does a great job of inching back, but he opens up the gate. And when you open up the gate, guys, you rarely get hands on a guy. When you do get hands on a guy, it really doesn't matter. So now he opens up the gate, and now he ends up out of position. He's over the top. He's over the top right here, guys, and you can see his footwork. Now you're in the business of the reaching business. And whenever you start reaching and grabbing, you naturally start to panic. And when you naturally start to panic, things like happen where he's in good position, but because his footwork was so far off, he picks up the flag. You see what I'm saying, guys? Let me run that back from the top one more time. Be patient at the line. The beauty of playing DB is this, guys. A lot of people don't talk about this. We are in control at DB. Why are we in control? Because the receiver, Van Jefferson, has to come to you, guys. He has to come to you. If he stays right here at the line, that's a win for us. He has to come into your territory. Be patient. A lot of guys get up here and press, and they they're so they do so much extra movement that they lose on a simple route. No Igabagani is an athletic guy. All you have to do is inch back right here, stay square. Give me one shuffle to the side. Give me one shuffle to the side. So when you're inching back right here, instead of opening up the gate, give me that shuffle. Van Jefferson, you have to know your receivers also. Van Jefferson is not a deep threat. He's not a deep threat receiver. You see what I'm saying? He's a crafty route running receiver. He looks to finesse you out your position. That's where the mental game comes in. If he's going to take his chances running by you as an athletic guy, it would not be ran like a 4-4. Take that chance. You see what I'm saying? Know your positions of power. This is a crafty route running receiver. I've seen him do this to some of the best DBs in the game, Derek Stingley, etc. 
You see what I'm saying? Be patient. Take one shuffle. Don't be so in a hurry to open up and run. Because then you get finessed out of your position. Now he loses his inside leverage that he was trying to maintain. And now his feet are running faster than anything else. And he gets the penalty. So be patient on that, guys. Now this is the very next play. This is the very next play. Versus Van Jefferson. So here we go. We're going to play the footage. Right there, guys. Make some mistake off rip. Let me run that back one more time because some people didn't catch it. DBs, you have to work on your false movement. A lot of DBs work on false movement. Your first step at the press position, unless you're doing a quick jam, it cannot be to jump up and get flat footed. Watch him jump up. That's a false movement right there, guys. Now you automatically put yourself on the heel. And now you're off balance. You see what I'm saying? Now I bet you, I guarantee his next step is to open up. It's another pass interference. Let me run that back from the top. Again, know your receiver. If I'm playing a guy like Van Jefferson, this is just a critique. You see, when if I'm playing a guy like Van Jefferson, if I'm Noah Gabagany, I'm, I'm not worried about him really beating me deep. I feel like I have the athletic ability to run with him. That's for a lot of my young DBs. If you feel like, if you know you're the faster guy, be patient. This film study shows you Van Jefferson is just a crafty route runner. Very crafty. You see what I'm saying? Be patient at the line. Work your inch back technique. Work your inch back technique. You should be right here in shuffling. Don't open up the gate. Because now here at his, you're, you're getting held hostage, guys. You're getting held hostage at the end of the day. Don't open up the gate. Please, guys, one more time. Let me show it one more time. Be patient at the line. Inch back and shuffle to them. Shuffle to them so you can get hands on them. Right now, you're running on air. You're going to lose every time. I'm telling you guys. You're going to lose every time when you allow receivers to run on air. So this is back-to-back -back pass interferences for Noah Igabogany in this game. Now we have our man Noah Igabogany. He's lined up against Pitts. Pitts is kind of these new era tight ends. These new era tight ends that are long, athletic. They're almost like big receivers. These new era tight ends, they're, you know, modern day. They're, they're built to play in the spread. So Pitts is a pretty good uh, tight end in the SEC. So right here, understanding, again, positions of power. He's inside leverage. And, and for the big guys like Pitts, guys, you should not be worried about him taking the top off. You see what I'm saying? When I say take the top off, meaning him beating you deep. Be patient. Let him come to you, especially tight ends. When you match up, and this is for my young safeties, because you're going to be playing man-to-man -man on a lot of these flex tight ends. Be patient at the line. These guys are not going to run past you. These guys don't open up the gate and allow him to run. May He should have to work for every inch. Be patient. Now, again, another false step at the line. You're putting yourself on your heels for no reason, guys. You're putting yourself on your heels for no reason. Unless you're going to quick jam him, you should not be taking this little hop step up. Let me show it to you one more time. And this is something that's just attention to detail. He probably doesn't even know he's doing this. At the line, it's no need to do that. You get flat-footed. So you're putting yourself in a pressure position off-rip with a guy you don't need to be in a press pressure position with. Just take a few steps. Let him come to you. Let him come to you. You see what I'm saying? Now, a pretty good job of staying square in order to get his hands on him. Pretty good job of staying square. Let me run that back. Now, although he takes the false step, a pretty good job of staying square and getting his hands on him. Now you're in perfect position. Remember what I talked about with our guy, Jeff Okuda. Let's squeeze this. Yeah, you got him to wide and you got your hands on him at the line. Let's lean on him. Let's squeeze this. I'm not saying do anything obvious. Don't start pulling the receiver. But put your back on him. Lean that shoulder into him. Watch the Jeff Okuda teach tape I just did. Jeff Okuda is excellent at doing that. Force this pressure point. Most referees are not going to call that. Lean on him, guys. Widen him. Don't allow him. I'm going to just run side to side with him. No, you want to lean on him because, remember, we have an extra defender right here. This is the whole reason why you're lined up inside position because you want the sideline to be able to make a play if need be. So lean on him, guys. And what do I tell guys all the time? 
Look outside in. We are in the era of back shoulder passes. If you are running side by side with a guy, that means it's going to most likely come back shoulder. You cannot look uh, inside out. You have to look outside in. Check for that back shoulder first. Because when you check outside, guys, you're be- you get a better angle on the ball if it's coming back shoulder. But when you turn inside, the ball is almost in a blind spot. I've done this several times. Trust me on this, guys. Turn outside in first. Now, once you check outside and you see a back shoulder is not coming, then you have no choice but to turn inside. You pretty much know you're in position of power and the ball is coming inside. You see what I'm saying? But he turns inside out and he gets finessed and he hits him with the back shoulder guy. All right, now we got our, our guy Noah Igabagany. He's lined up with Terrence Marshall, uh, another great receiver from LSU. Kind of slept on this year with Jefferson and, and Jamar Chase, but uh, another great receiver from LSU. So in this play, you know, we're looking at him with, with uh, red zone situations. Red zone situation, guys, most guys going to line up still inside leverage. Guys at LSU pretty much line up outside leverage. But, you know, it is how it is. You know, that just depends on what you've been coached. So let's look at the tape. Inside leverage. Does a great job inching back, but he kind of inches back at an angle, guys. And this is what I mean. When I say inch back, guys, you got to inch back. He's kind of inching back with his gate open. He's inviting the receiver to come that way. So you can see what I'm talking about. See how he's inching back with his gate open, guys? And now, right here, he's still in good position. You got to squeeze him. He starts kind of jogging. He starts jogging, and then he panics for no reason. Didn't have to jump or dive. But now it's a touchdown, guys. It's the little things at DB, guys, especially when you're playing these elite receivers. Make sure you stay square. Don't inch back with your gate open. He's inviting him this way. And then, like I say, take film from Jeff Okuda. Jeff Okuda does a great job of pressing this point. If you open up your gate, guys, just squeeze the receiver. And don't panic. He just lost this play. He still could have made the play if he didn't just panic and start diving. You see what I'm saying? So 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 be uh be patient at the line, man, and don't panic. Don't panic. Now here's our guy Noah Gabagany. He's lined up this time with Devontae Smith, another great receiver, a receiver who pretty much uh had his way with Derrick Stingley Jr., you know, uh one of the top rated corners coming into next year. So let's check out this film. Now on this play, he looks like he's lined up outside leverage on this play to me. It looks like he's lined up outside leverage, meaning he's trying to force the receiver back in. Those are his positions of power. So off rip. Doesn't inch back, but he does a great job of staying square. Let me play that back one more time. Now again on this play, doesn't inch back, but leaning is very important. Let me play that back from the top one more time. So again, watch the feet. This is what one shuffle can do. One shuffle, instead of opening up the gate, it widened him almost five yards. Devontae Smith is not a physical receiver. But at this point, just lean on him. You're already winning. Lean on him. Even though he's pushing you too, don't put that arm up, guys. Lean on him. When you lean on him, the ref is not going to call that. When you lean on him, the ref is not going to call that, family. So this is some food for thought for the young DBs out here. That's today's teach tape. You know, uh, again, these are just my opinions, guys, you know, from things that I learned in the game playing college football, you know, and, and, and learned at the high school level. You know, I'm sure some people can come and critique it. And if you have critiques for it, jump in the comment section, guys. I'm, this is about helping young DBs, man. It's not about I, I, I'm the in all be all. I see a lot of guys where they say something and they want to add like their word is law. Of course, Everything could be nitpicked. So come in the comment section. Tell me what you think. If this is good advice, if this is bad advice, or what you think I need to speak more on or, or show, you, so, uh, show you some more footage of. Or if you have questions, guys, that's what I'm here for. But that's today's video. I hope you appreciate it. Uh, going to what our points, what I want you to work on, guys, it's the same thing. I'm always tell you guys to work on staying square at the line of scrimmage. You have to stay square at the line of scrimmage, guys. And I'm going to start getting specific with the details. At least give me one shuffle. At least give me one shuffle to the side. One square shuffle because that one shuffle can widen the receiver as much as five yards as you just saw in that last play with Devontae Smith. 
You see what I'm saying? Also, little things. Work on your squeeze, guys. When you're squeezing a receiver after you've taken that shuffle and you widen him, finish him. Finish him. That starts by leaning into him. Widen him even more with your body by leaning on him. Take him completely out the play. And then when that ball is thrown for the third point, look outside in. We're going to check for that back shoulder first. The back shoulder is really a bailout play. You've really whooped the receiver at the line, but because you shadow him so good, they're going to throw a back shoulder. So he has to throw it short just because you're on him so much. So check outside, back in. You dig? So that's that's today's video, guys. Man, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, help your boy get to 100 likes, share this video for all you young DBs out there. I know you're out there on the field right now, but film study is very important. Football is 90% mental, 10% physical. And that's today's video. Leave a comment below. And until next time, I'm out.